welcome to One More Glass, the weekly wine show that attempts to demystify the world of wine. And this week, we have a very, very special episode for you. And as you can tell from the array of gadgets in, in front of us, this is talking about um, accessories. Wine toys. Little <laughs> wine toys, yeah. <laughs> okay, so today, yeah, we've got a, almost a, a smorgasbord of wine gadgets in front of us. We do, we? yeah. Yeah, I'm quite excited about this one. I mean, we, we have fun, but... Although that's... you've left your um, screwdriver here, so uh, that's yeah, the wrong... okay. Um, or is well, that actually a wine gadget? That's actually, we'll move on to that in a bit, yeah. Okay, so where should we start? Let's start with the most exciting one, the one that maybe the viewers at home have heard about a little bit, and probably one of the most probably exciting not. technological developments in the last decade regarding wine and wine gadgets and accessories. Should we cut through the nonsense? It's the most useful, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, generally, out of these, it is the one that, that will change your wine drinking life the most. Okay, so this is called the Coravan. Um, to then skip to the chase, this is a, a ingenious way that you can open or taste a glass of wine or a, or, or a small, uh, whatever size you, you would like, but you can taste the, uh, taste the wine without actually taking the cork out. I mean, that is quite exceptional, really, as a, as a concept. And how, yeah. how do they do it? Well, I think it's amazing. So if, if, you, if you have a go, um, I'll sort of talk through the mechanism. So this... So quickly, just to say, this is wine that's already been Coravan. We've, we've so as already, you can see... We've already had a few out of that, haven't we? Yeah, and if we use one of the other gadgets quickly, we can actually take the top off here. And yeah. um, the viewers at home can actually see that the cork here is actually still in. So the cork's still in. As you can see, there's probably less than half of the bottle left, which is not a magic trick. This is genuine. And this has all been achieved by the Coravan. So this explains to the viewers how this works as I apply it. So this clever, clever little gadget, um, as Tom said, is, is designed to just extract a measure of wine. Um, so it does it via a hypodermic needle that goes through the cork without doing it any damage. Which is what I'm pushing down now yeah. into the bottle. Careful. Uh, once it's in there... You so can it's now then, locked into place. Yeah, you can then extract however much wine you like. So as you can see now, the wine is uh, obviously coming out into the glass. And when you're done, it very cleverly not only leaves the cork without doing any damage, but it also puts an inert layer of gas inside the bottle. So as you can see, the cork is still very much intact. Yeah. And there is, I think it's argon gas actually, isn't it, that's injected inside? Yeah, so it's an inert gas because of course if it was oxygen or if there was an increase in the oxygen in the bottle, the wine wouldn't last very long. Change, yeah, change the whole chemical composition of what you're drinking. I mean, just smell that. I mean, it just smells exactly Still how good. you would expect a wine. And this is, I mean, just to give you a bit of, um, you know, a bit of an insight, this was opened over a week ago. Um, it smells great, doesn't it? It smells great. I mean, it's exactly as you expect it to be. And let me just give you my personal uh, experience with Coravan and why I think it's so great. Um, you know, I live at home with my girlfriend and, um, you know, often you want to try a bottle of wine, but how many times have you been in a situation where you think midweek night, uh, maybe even later in the week, on the weekend, you open a bottle of wine, between the two of you, you think you're going to drink the whole bottle, we end up with, I don't know, half or maybe a third of the bottle left and you go, oh, we're not going to finish it tonight. You put the cork back on, put it in the fridge or into the cupboard and you come back to it a day later, a couple of days later and it's wrecked. It's wrecked. The wine's done. And, you know, if you actually accumulate that, over a long period of time, there's a lot of wine that you're wasting, and especially if you think about the price point. And I think it works really well um, with fine wine as well. You know, if you've got uh, a bottle absolutely. that's worth 80, 100 pounds, and, and it's crucial for you as someone that doesn't have many friends, um, <laughs> to, to have something like that in your cupboard, you yeah. don't have to get a group of mates together to justify a really expensive bottle. You keep looking at that expensive bottle of wine, or the one you've spent a little bit more on, and you think to yourself, when am I going to get an opportunity to taste this? Because I need a reason to open it, because I've got to finish the whole bottle. Coravan, immediately, if you have that aspirational bottle, or the gift, or the one you spent a little bit more money on, you can taste it yeah. more often. You can just go, actually, do you know what? I fancy a glass of that to see what it tastes like. And you're not going to damage the bottle at all. You're not going to damage the quality of the wine. It, it's, it really is an exceptional um, uh, gadget. And I think it's something that's going to revolutionize not just drinking at home, but also in, in restaurants and in other establishments where suddenly restaurants can now offer people the opportunity to taste wines by the glass that are maybe higher quality than they normally would have done in the past. There's one thing I want to know. How much a Coravan paying you? How much a Coravan paying you? Very <laughs> good. I, well, look, I mean, there aren't other versions of this out there. So there is just Coravan. If you want to sponsor our show, uh, One More Glass, then we would be uh, eternally grateful. We'll so. It, 
yeah, just contact us and we'll let you know where to send the Coravans. So let's move on to the next gadget. <laughs> so the next gadget is um, something you want to introduce. This is a gift to you from yeah, your... Yeah, this, this is given to me by my brother and he'll be really pleased to know that I've never used it. So um, thanks, Harry. So what is it? This is a wine thermometer. Okay, well, we've got a bottle of wine. Let's use it. So all it does, it's quite, you know, it's quite elegantly designed. It's just a strap on. Yeah. So <laughs> it goes, goes straight onto the bottle and, uh, and it shows the temperature that the wine is at. So what temperature are we looking at this bottle? 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I, I find that unlikely. Yeah. Because that's been in that cellar there, it, which it is a- It feels cold. Which is it? a constant 14 degrees. Mm. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's look beyond the fact that it might not be working correctly. I mean, this is a great gadget because it makes you, if it works correctly, it helps you drink wines at the right temperature. Why is that important? Why is that important? So all different wines have a different serving temperature yep. to, Maximise pleasure, and it sounds a bit ridiculous, but if you serve a champagne too warm, you're not gonna get the proper flavour profile that, that, that the winemaker is trying to, try to create. If you, it, would, if you would take a typical red wine that the drinkers are gonna be drinking at home, something they're gonna have on a midweek night, what temperature would you advise? So a typical red wine, a lot of people would drink at room temperature. You okay. Know, you'd take it out, you'd leave it there and wait till it was... Most know, people would, but what would you recommend? Minutes. Well, it should be drunk really at cellar temperature. Okay, which, which is... Maximum really 15 degrees. Okay. So you're looking between 13 and 15 degrees to drink your red wine. Okay. So if you're at home and you don't have a wine fridge, you don't have a wine cellar, um, you have to stay, keep your wine bottles in an open rack, this could be quite a good gadget because you can take them out of the rack, pop them into the fridge, take them back out of the fridge once it's cooled down a little bit, maybe pop this thermometer on and wait till you get to that sort of 15, 16 degrees to know that's the optimum temperature serve. Would that, would that be a recommendation? Yeah, exactly. So that is a pleasure optimizer. Okay, interesting wine description. Now, I think if you put that into Google, you wouldn't necessarily come up with that. Yeah, maybe. You might have a good night, though. Um, right, let's Moving move on, on to this gadget, which has already been used. Now, this is something that you might be more familiar with, and this is very simply a way to um, dispose of the foil. You need to hold the foil. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So, it's a so wine, you go. there's a trick. Make sure you hold the foil if you've wine, got a wine defoiler. That's what we got there. We've got a couple of other gadgets to open a bottle of wine. Now let's talk about this retro one that you've been very proud to bring in today. And okay. I've never seen in use before. So I'm super excited. You should be super excited about seeing this. Let's, not, let's go. Not many people will have seen a corkette before. I think it was big in the 80s, early 90s. I mean, it's a terrible name, isn't it? It looks awful as well. But this is a really clever gadget. And I'm <laughs> probably owning one of the few left in the UK. How this, does it work? This is designed, not unlike the Coravan, to go inside the bottle. It's a bit more rudimentary than the A little bit band. rudimentary, yeah, a little yeah. bit more. Not stylized. A little bit more turn of the century. Um, and then it just pumps air below the cork, which then forces it out. So here we go. And this is supposed to be easier than using a corkscrew. It's actually working really well. Oh! Hey. <laughs> yeah. That's so there you go. Was. Yeah, really handy. And it's actually, it's quite good for removing corks that are quite old. Fantastic. Okay, so let's move on to another gadget, which is to be used once the bottle's open. Now, okay. we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about the Canton glassware another time. So let's talk about this, this particular gadget, which is a way to speed up the process if you don't have a lot of time. Yeah, so this is a wine, it's a novelty wine aerator. You've probably seen fast master ones, the little, uh, sort of Zeppelin shaped things that you can pour wine through. I like this one more because it's, Oh. It looks cooler. It looks cooler, yeah. So yeah. it sucks oxygen through the back of the through the back of the stag's head. Yeah, so and the point of that is to increase the oxygen. It opens the wine up more. It yeah. opens the flavour. It softens. It softens the wine off and just makes it easier to drink. So if you don't have time to decant it, this could be a quicker way to maybe have a wine that's a little bit more open and enjoyable. Absolutely. And it looks like he's throwing up as well. It looks like me at the end of a long night. Oh. We've all been there before, Ooh, haven't we? Yeah. Poor Mr. Stag. Let's get him back in. I actually remember doing that exact thing. I mean, amazingly for me, that is immediately more open, more round, more expressive, and that's all thanks to the stag's head. So thanks very much, cheers to that. Thanks, stag. So this is called a butler's thief. Um, and I don't actually know when it was invented, but I'm assuming by the name that it was usually used by the staff in. And what's the point of it? For, for corks that are a little bit more tricky or those that are older it's, bottles? It's usually for older bottles, yeah, but you can also very cunningly remove a cork without there being any impact. And of course, you know, that's your typical sort of corkscrew. So you can see that the, the so design and the look of it is completely different. It slots very neatly just down the side of the cork. So if someone at home's got one of these and they're trying it out, you, in terms of where you place it in, you want to get it around the outside of the cork or in the cork? Just either prong to the outside, the longer prong will go in first and then the other will follow and it will just okay. ease its way in. And then you can you quite, twist it out. Yeah, quite easily remove the cork, Ooh, he says. 
Good without, job. Without causing any impact at all, hence the name The Butler's Thief. So the pantry staff could steal in, nick some of your wine, put the cork back in, you'd never know about it. And just to finish on um, where we started, really, with the Coravan, that's the other great thing about this. I mean, this is a Coravan bottle. It's lasted for over a week, but that could have been a month, six months, a year. Yeah. And you've now got to the point where you've got that much left and you think, well, I don't need a Coravan that much. I'm ready to drink it. You pull out the cork. It's ready to go. That's ready that to go. That's ready to finish off. Um, it'll be beautiful wine and a, and, a, and a beautiful time drinking it, I think. And I think the point of all these gadgets is to make wine more accessible, more interesting, and actually easier to drink. Um, they tend to speed up or change the nature of the product to, to make it better. Um, so don't be intimidated by them. Absolutely. So thank you very much for watching our episodes on wine gadgets. We really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if, you've got, if you want to get in contact and you want to leave us any feedback at all, then make sure you get in the comments below and leave us a message. We'll make sure we get back to you. Um, and of course, if you enjoyed the show and you want to see more of myself and Jack, then all you have to do is either follow or subscribe us. So thanks very much for watching and we look forward to seeing you again another time. Thank you.